in this module we are going to study classical theory labor markets the term classical refers to virtually all the economists who had written on macroeconomic questions before 1936 to classical economist the equilibrium level of income at any time was a point of full employment or a point when actual output was equal to potential output two features of the classical analysis are first classical economics stress the role of real as opposed to monetary factors in determining real variables such as output and employment money has a role in economy only as a means of exchange second classical economics stress the self adjusting tendencies of the economy government policies to ensure an adequate demand for output were considered by classical economists to be unnecessary and generally harmful the determination of output and employment in the classical theory occurs in labor goods and money markets in the economy after studying this module you shall be able to know about output employment under classical approach determine labor market equilibrium understand wage price flexibility derive aggregate supply curve compare classical and keynesian labor market let us begin this module by discussing determination of output and employment in the classical theory output and employment are determined by the production function and the demand for labor and the supply of labor in the economy the production function is the relationship between the level of output and the level of factor inputs assuming a given technology this can be written as q is a function of k and n where the total output q is the function f of stock of capital k and the quantity of the homogeneous labor input n for the short run the capital stock is fixed thus output varies with labor only output is an increasing function of labor output increases as the quantity of labor increases but after a point when more workers are employed diminishing marginal returns to labor start this is shown in given figure where the curve q is a function of n is the production function and the total output oq1 corresponds to the full employment level nf but when more workers nf n2 are employed beyond the full employment level of output oq1 the increase in output q1 q2 is less than the increase in employment n1 n2 Next we will discuss labor market. The labor market is a place where workers and employers interact with each other. Employers compete to hire the best and workers compete to maximize their satisfaction by having job. A labor market in an economy functions with demand and supply of labor. In this market labor demand is the firm's demand for labor and supply is the worker's supply of labor. the supply and demand of labor in the market is influenced by changes in the bargaining power next we will discuss the labor market equilibrium the classical labor market analysis assumes that the market works well firms and individuals optimize they have better information about relevant prices there is no barrier to the adjustment of money wages the market clears labor demand firms are the buyers of labor in the market in the classical model perfect competitors are the firms that choose their output level so as to maximize profits the firms will increase output until the marginal cost that is mc of producing a unit of output is equal to the marginal revenue that is mr received from its sale for perfect competition marginal revenue is equal to price p thus the marginal cost is equal to the money wage divided by the marginal product of labor for that particular firm mc is equal to w upon mpn 
where MC is equal to marginal cost of a particular firm, W is equal to money wage, MPN is equal to units of output produced by the incremental units of labor employed. The short run profit maximizing condition for a perfect competitive firm is P is equal to MC. Thus, P is equal to W upon MPN. In the input market, firms maximize profits by hiring labor services up to MR is equal to MC. Therefore, W upon P is equal to MPN. That is, the firm will hire up to the point where the additional output obtained by hiring one more worker MPN is just equal to the real wage W upon P paid to hire that worker. The labor demand curve is downward sloping due to the law of diminishing returns. This is because the profit maximizing quantity of labor demanded by a firm at each real wage is given by the quantity of labor input that equates the real wage and MPN. And the MPN is the firm's demand curve for labor. Thus, labor demand is inversely related to the real wage. The labor demand function is written as n raised to the power d is a function of w upon p. Labor supply. Labor is supplied by individual workers in the economy. In classical economics, it is assumed that individual attempts to maximize utility. The level of utility depends positively on both real income, which gives the individual a command over goods and services and leisure. There is a trade-off between the two goals because income is increased by work that reduces available leisure time. Therefore, labor supply curve is written as n raised to the power s is equal to g in bracket w upon p. Labor supply is determined by the real wage. The workers receive utility ultimately from consumption. And in making the labor leisure decision, the individual is concerned with the command over goods and services received for a unit of labor. Thus, real wage increases, either money wage increases or price decreases, leisure decreases and hours of work increase. The labor supply curve is positively sloped. More labor is assumed to be supplied at higher real wage rate. This relation reflects the fact that a higher real wage rate means a higher price for leisure in terms of foregone income. Now, the labor market equilibrium will take place at the point of intersection of labor demand curve and labor supply curve. Coming on to price wage flexibility, the classical economist believed that there was always full employment in the economy. In case of unemployment, a general cut in money wages should take the economy to full employment level. This argument is based on the assumption that there is a direct and proportional relation between money wages and real wages. When money wages W reduces, this leads to reduction in the cost of production and thus prices of product will also decrease. When prices fall, demand for product increases and sales will automatically increase. Increased sales will require more production and employment of more labor. Therefore, full employment will be attained again. The demand for labor is a decreasing function of the real wage rate. If W is the money wage rate, P is the price of the product and MPN is the marginal product of labor. We have W is equal to P into MPN or W upon P is equal to MPN. Since MPN declines, as employment increases, it follows that the level of employment increases as the real wage W upon P declines. This is explained in figure. Panel A shows the labor market equilibrium at point E, which is the full employment level NF and the real wage W upon P0. If the real wage rises to W upon P1, supply exceeds the demand for labor by SD and N1 N2 workers are unemployed. It is only when the wage is reduced to W upon P0 that unemployment disappears and the level of full employment is attained.
This is shown in panel B where MPN is the marginal product of labor curve which slopes downward as more labor is employed. Since every worker is paid wages equal to his marginal product, therefore the full employment level NF is reached when the wage rate falls from W upon P1 to W upon P0. Contrarywise, with a fall in the wage from W upon P0 to W upon P2, the demand for labor increases more than its supply by S1 D1. The workers demand higher wage. This leads to the rise in the wage from W upon P2 to W upon P0 and the full employment level NF is attained. Next we will discuss classical aggregate supply curve. An aggregate supply curve is a graphical representation of the relation between real production and price level. For a firm, the price curve gives the output at each level of the product price. The aggregate supply curve shows the total output firms will supply at each level to the aggregate price level. For a firm, profits are maximized by equating marginal cost and prices that is W upon MPN is equal to P or MPN is equal to W upon P. The marginal product equals the real wage. Now, constructing the aggregate supply function, consider a price level P1 and money wage W1, employment level N1 and resulting output level Y1. Now, if price increases to 2P1, if wages are fixed, then employment would increase to N2. The higher price means a lower real wage and firms will try to expand both employment and output. To expand employment, firms raise money wage in an effort to bid workers away from other firms. Firms that do not do this suffer high quit rates and lose workers. This process of increasing money wage will stop at a point where money wage has increased in equal proportion to prices to re-equilibrate supply and demand in labor market. Thus, money wage will increase to 2W1. At this point, the initial real wage is restored and employment is back to its original level. Consequently, output supplied is equal to Y1. Thus, equilibrium in the labor market requires that money wages rise proportionately with prices to maintain the equilibrium real wage in that market. The vertical aggregate supply curve explains the supply determined nature of output in the classical model. This means whatever the shape and position of the aggregate demand curve, it would clearly not affect the equilibrium output. For output to be in equilibrium, we must be on the supply curve. Output must be at Y1. Now we will study classical theory of interest rate. The equilibrium interest rate is the rate in the classical theory at which the amounts of funds individual desires to lend is equal to the amount others desired to borrow. Here, borrowing consists of selling a bond and lending consists of buying such bond. The rate of interest measures the return to holding bonds and equivalently the cost of borrowing. In the classical system, the interest rate is determined by equating the supply of loanable funds and the demand for loanable funds. Savings provide the supply of loanable funds and are directly related to the rate of interest. Investment and the government deficit are the demand for loanable funds. Thus, interest rate is determined by the intersection of these curves. Finally, we will discuss classical versus Keynesian labor market. In the classical labor market, the demand and supply of labor determines the real wage rate and the equilibrium will take place at full employment level only. There will be no involuntary unemployment at equilibrium, but Keynes criticized it by saying that wage bargaining is not about real wages, it is about the money wages. Wage bargaining cannot determine real wage as price level changes can occur. 
also classical economics assume that if we are away from full employment forces not in balance were acting to bring output to full employment level but keen suggested the wage could get stuck above the market clearing wage with unemployment the market participants may not have perfect information and leads to equilibrium with not full employment level now let us summarize what we have learned in this module the important feature of the classical model is the supply determined nature of output and employment this property follows from the vertical aggregate supply curve the classical supply curve is vertical because labor and output are assumed to be traded in markets that always are in equilibrium and in which all participants make decisions based on announced real wage rate and product prices two main assumptions of labor market are first perfectly flexible prices and wages second perfect information on the part of all market participants about market prices it is also assumed that equilibrium must be achieved for any time period prices and wages must be flexible in the short run both suppliers and purchasers of labor must know the relevant trading prices this condition requires that when selling and buying labor at given money wage w both workers and employers know the command over goods that will result from such a wage w upon p